What it do, what it do. It's your boy D Funk, aka Track Dealer. Back at you with another Pro Tools tip. This Pro Tools tip number two. Today I'll be covering how to do production in Pro Tools, how to make beats in Pro Tools. I've been coming across a lot of people lately and through the years that don't know you can make beats in Pro Tools. And it'd be shocking people. <laughs> it's crazy. And most people and a lot of people think that Pro Tools is just for mixing and mastering or whatever. But Pro Tools has a very dope production engine in it for making beats. And I use Pro Tools a lot for production. A very lot. Like, majority of my production is done in Pro Tools. So, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to set up. This video is going to be covering how to set up your session for production. Now, I'll do separate videos on how to get into it more extensively and everything. But this video right here is just to show you how to set up the session to actually do production and do beats in Pro Tools. The first thing you're going to need to do is set up a click track for the metronome, which you see I already have there. What you do is you go to a track, and you come down to create click track. That's step one. And once you have that enabled, once you created a click track, you can click on that actual plugin within on that uh, track. And as you can see here, I already have it set to MPC click. It'll be on the default sound, which is that. Um, I'm an MPC head. So they have different sounds you can use for your taste or whatever. I'm an MPC guy, so put it on the MPC click and I close that out. As you can see, they've been the MPC sound. The next thing we're gonna do is go back up the track and there's keyboard shortcuts for all these. Uh, as you can see, we're gonna go to track again. We're gonna create new. We're gonna leave that on one for now. We're going to change the, stereo, the mono to stereo, and we're going to drop down to instrument track. We're also going to add what you do by click on this plus right here on the right side over the top of create. Because you can add multiple tracks within one time you create it, one creation. So we're going to keep it on one. We're going to change that to stereo, and we're going to go down to master fader right there. You want to hit create. And there you see we have the instrument track I just created and the master fader track. Alright. The next thing that we want to do is set the tempo. As you can see right here, I have the 135. The default setting is 120. What you're going to do go right here is click this plus sign right beside this red uh, arrow. And it's going to bring up the tempo change, which you're going to change the tempo. If you already know the tempo you're heading for and, and that uh, beat you're producing already in the beginning, that's good. You can type it in. Or um, you can adjust it later if you're building off a sample or however you, you do your production. Uh, I changed it to 135. I don't know why. Uh, it's just a double time beat, I guess. I'll leave it at that. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a plug-in on our instrument track that we added, the brown one. And then we're going to go down to multi-channel plug-in. And we're going to go down to instrument. As you can see, I have a lot of instruments already and a lot of VSTs on my system. We're going to go down to a stock instrument, which is expand to. We're going to pull that plug-in up. And as you can see, I'm hitting the keys on my MIDI controller, and you can hear the, the sounds. There's two ways you can add different sounds within this plugin, which is one that comes up on bright pads right there. You see that? And it's a drop down menu, and it can go, you drop down to the different instruments. The way that I normally do it, I go up here where it says factory default. And on this drop down, it gives me all the categories. And you can see within each category, it's multiple, multiple sounds. Mega sounds, mega sounds. We're going to add, uh, let's say, simple arpeggio. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Pretty dope, huh? All right, and as you can see right here, it's a minus and it's a plus. Right here, under where we clicked on that drop down, we're gonna hit the plus with goes the number, the number two sound, the second sound in that category bank. And you can go on and on. All right, we're gonna go with that one. Uh, might sound familiar. Different producers have used these sounds to show you that these has some pretty dope sounds and you can go with in there and you can add effects and you can change the settings and you can create your own sound within it as well. So once we have that instrument pulled up, next thing we're going to do is assign how many bars do we want it to record. Uh, we can set it for, I'm going to set it for four bars. As you can see, it set my cursor, set the length of the the track for four bars that we'll be recording on. Next thing you're going to do is go to the right hand side, top right hand corner. You can see up here where it says count off, which is already highlighted. If you don't see that, go to your far right hand corner. You see a drop down arrow right here. You click on that and you can click on all. This is just showing all the, it's like if I put it on minimal, you see it to take it away. It's just showing all your tool bars that you'll be needing to use within your session. So we'll go back that, to that. I'm clicking on all as you can see all my settings are there uh the hand tools cursor the hand tools trim tools nudge and grid settings transport tools um your midi the midi time code and all that so everything you, all your toolbars are there which is important you're going to need them during the session all right our count off is on which is the count off is which is when you have four to eight ticks or clicks to come in before you actually hit the first MIDI note to start recording. It's a pre-count, or oh, it's different terminologies. Count off, pre-count, pre-roll. Uh, you can click right here where it says one bar. And you can change if you want it from one uh, bar or two bars or how many bars uh, fits your style of recording production. I'm gonna leave it on one bar. Okay. Now we have the tempo set up, we have the track set up, the instrument track set up, we have the count off set up, we have the number of bars. Now we're going to record. <laughs> this right here. All right. Uh, you can even hit command space bar to record or the number three to your on the right hand side of your keyboard on the number pad, uh, which I use a lot. Or you can press the, re the record from here and then hit play. All of them do the same thing. I'm going to use the number three. Excuse me, which I didn't. I skipped the step. I didn't record and enable my instrument track, which I'm going to do there. The number three or space bar, uh, command space bar, same thing. <laughs> See, recorded the four bars after the the one bar count in. As you can see, I have MIDI notes recorded. I actually hit an extra note there, which we can clean up. And I'm going to do another video how to actually go in and be more extensive with the MIDI functions. What you do now is the, the track that you just created right there, that MIDI track, you double click on that, and that will bring up, you can close out this plugin. We'll bring up your piano roll, which I know a lot of you are familiar with from FL Studio and Logic and uh, Reason and all the other production software. The piano roll, as you can see from the piano roll, we can make our MIDI edits. We can edit our MIDI notes that we just recorded with the keyboard. Or you can draw on the notes as well, just like any other software, but I just played it in with the keys. I'm going to delete that note right there. It was unneeded. Command A, which uh, selects all of the notes. I want to edit all of them. I want to trim them in the beginning and in the end so they'll be on the grid, which you set up here. You have your grid. You can set your grid up to the different um, time signatures, 1 8th, 1 4th, 1 16th, 
If you want to make the note smaller, you know, you edit the note smaller. I'm keeping it on one bar. All right. I'm going to go back to my main page. And we're going to play back. <laughs> There you have it. That's one track of MIDI recorded in Pro Tools. Of course, you know you can add and add and add. We're going to add a new track, a new stereo instrument track again. Oh, yeah. One thing I always remember is Apple or can, excuse me, could Command S is save or go to file and go down to save. Save your work, make that a habit. Always Apple S, Command S, if you're on PC or whatever, whatever, always save. Make that a very strict part of your habits of recording. Trust me, I lost a lot of work and it's something that you don't want to experience a lot that you're working. Because anytime you never know what can go wrong. These uh, your computer might freeze up, could be a power outage or anything, and a lot of software freezes up sometimes. Anything, so that you don't have any control over. You don't want to lose your work. It's frustrating, and that beat is gone. You'll never get it the same. You'll never get what you were doing the same. Trust me. You won't even be in the same vibe. The energy, your energy, be different. So always Apple S, Command S. All right, we added a new plugin track. We can go down. We can add another instrument. I'll go back to expand. And as you can see, expand came up. I'll go to drums. As you can see, it's a lot of drum kits. I started the first one. And. Just use those for the sake of this video. We're going to record and enable that track. Then we're going to uh, command space bar or number three on the right hand side on the right number pad. Mm -hmm. All right, this is something a little basic just to give you an idea. All right, I just recorded some drums. Kick and a clap. I'll go double click on that track again. As you can see, those notes came up, and what I'll do is I'll change my grid to 1 16th. Actually, I'll 1 8th. And as you can see, the notes are not hitting on the grid properly. They are off. The beat will be off. One thing we can do. You can edit those manually, as you can see, like I did the last track, you can actually snip it or whatever. You can also quantize this. You go to event, event operations, quantize. And from there, the quantize page will come up. It's uh, default, but it will be 116. And make sure all your MIDI notes are selected. You can hit apply. As you can see, it moved. And there you go. That's how you record MIDI and make beats in Pro Tools. You can highlight those, and you can Command-D, which is duplicate, or you can go to Edit, and you can do it from there. Or you can go to Repeat, and you can set it how many times you want this to repeat. So, like, you want it to set this for 8. So, now you have that down, and you can set it how many times you want, or... Like I said, Command D, which is duplicate. You can do how many times you want to go away from the track, and you can start doing your arrangement from the MIDI notes. I do future videos on how to track it out to audio, 
as well as go into more extensive MIDI production tips and using Pro Tools as a production tool for making beats. It's a great tool to use. All of them are great within their own right. You know, all of them do different things, but all of them pretty much do the same in some manner. Uh, so it's always good to know different software and be up on game and just being able to just use different things because you can always get inspired with new ideas and just new create new music and better music just having different tools and more more at your disposal so this is your boy d funk aka track dealer for my pro tools tip number two hope this was helpful and useful i'll go over the quick rundown again we created a click track which we, from there, we created stereo instrument track, which we did the arpeggiated sound on, which is this from Expand, which is the plugin. We did that first. We added a, another MIDI track from Expand, which was the drums. And that together. That's how you produce in Pro Tools. This your boy Defunk, aka Track Dealer, signing off. If you found this video helpful and useful, I like it, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word. Peace and love. I'm out.